Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you guys the very long awaited how to buy second hand or how to buy pre-loved designer items um, guide video. So I just wanted to preface this video by saying now this isn't going to be the be all and end all of how to purchase, you know, second hand item without ever getting it wrong. This is basically just me giving you advice on how I've been purchasing my items and now how I've come to accumulate, you know, some amazing finds from the pre-loved market um, in great quality and for the price. Um, you just can't beat it. So there's many, there's a few reasons why someone would want to buy from the pre-loved market. For myself, it's um, firstly I love vintage pieces I am more the type that I actually like I enjoy the thrill of finding amazing pieces um, you know in amazing quality for such a great price some of the pieces I enjoy are discontinued and that might be a reason why I prefer to purchase um, second hand or just generally sometimes quality is better and, and for the price you just you know sometimes it's hard to justify buying brand new so there's a range of reasons some people just find that the price point is just better for them they're not willing to shed out you know this many thousands of dollars brand new you know there's a good reason for everyone to purchase from the pre-owned market and so if you are looking to dip your toes in that little realm of you know pre-owned pre-loved second hand um, previously owned then continue to watch this video and we will get on with it so what I'll do is I'll give you my tips and advice and then I'll move on to show you some of my favorite um, vintage um, secondhand pieces that I've you know come to collect I've got my notes in this GM agenda here and no unfortunately this is not vintage but this is secondhand as well so this all ties in so number one tip do your research on the item. I know it's easier said than done, but honestly, when I go to purchase my items, I research the heck out of that item. Like, I will watch a million YouTube reviews, I will look up a million Google images, I will stalk the item on Instagram, like find a hashtag for it and then stalk all the pictures there. Um, I will even go ahead and, you know, look up replica videos just so I know what an authentic piece looks like and what a replica looks like. So the replica videos, I look for what is obvious, what isn't, you know, so that when I look at that item on a listed piece or, um, you know, a listing on eBay or on the website, then I can actually look at those sort of red flags as well that might be applicable to more fake items as compared to, you know, authentic pieces. So really get to know the item that you want to purchase um, if you can try to have a look at it in stores but ideally you just want to be looking at you know YouTube videos of authentic pieces looking at all the little details so the where the hot stamping is placed what the heat stamp looks like because it might be you know a little bit different compared to how it is now look at the um, grommets where they're located you know whether they have the imprinting on them also look at the stitching sometimes there's a double stitch in different areas just really look at the details it's all about the details because that is what fake pieces do not have because that is why these items cost a lot because of all the le little details of you know making sure all the stitches are perfect for example like Chanel Chanel has like more than 10 to 11 stitches per quilt so I would I actually count the stitches in the pictures that I get so like if, if I'm looking at an item I try to zoom in as close as I can and then I go ahead and actually count every little stitch in that listing so you know do your research is all I'm going to say yeah that it just you have to you have to you can't just buy something and then expect it to be real and then be surprised it's not if you if, if you've kind of blindly just gone ahead and purchased it on a whim so that's the first one next I want to mention is a reputable secondhand consignment stores now you guys if you watch YouTube videos you would know all about the different you know really well-known second-hand consignment stores and I'm talking about Fashion File, Yugi's Closet, um, there's also Portero, there's Patina's Boutique, there's Anne's Fabulous Finds. So those are more 
American based, I believe Portero is American, I'm not 100% sure, but The Real Real as well, those are all American based kind of companies that deal with secondhand, you know, pieces and then they will ship to wherever you are. Now, I think that these stores are really popular because they have a following, they have, they're well known, they have a reputation behind them, so because of that, they also are able to charge more for their items. So that's why I don't frequent those places um, often, just because I find that the price point when you convert it back to Australian dollars is just not worth it in the end. It's just, um, I could do better. I could just purchase it brand new and it would be the same price. So that is my only um, real gripe with those sort of stores, just because they do have the following, they have the market for it, they can charge their prices, they can really, you know, hike the prices up a little bit. Also, you have to be aware that when you purchase from, you know, most US consignment stores, you do have to pay customs and duties. Not that I'm advocating for, you know, trying to avoid it, but that's just something you have to take into consideration when you think of the final cost. You have to pay for shipping, customs and duties, and of course a conversion fee, which isn't so great in US dollars at the moment. So um, those are the more of the well-known consignment stores. So other stores that I want to mention is Rebonds here in Australia. I've never purchased from them, but I did go to their physical store in Sydney. Um, their prices are decent I think. Other sellers but are more based in Japan include Mallory's so the website itself looks really really dodgy but that's well known for selling you know authentic Chanel item. Trendly and from Saravit there's also Vestier Collective now that's more based in Europe UK I believe. That's not an actual physical store or a, a third party seller selling consignment pieces that is just a service so what happens is you have individual sellers post their item on the website and I think what happens is the seller then sends their item to Vestier Collective they authenticate the piece and then they send it to you so um, I've never purchased from them again but they've been featured on some magazines before in the past so apart from those consignment sellers there are other places you can purchase it primarily eBay with um, consignment sellers on eBay. You can also buy from private sellers on eBay. And nowadays, there's a lot of people buying from Instagram and Facebook. So um, there's a range of places you can buy secondhand items from. I actually prefer to buy from eBay. I know, watch out, eBay. But eBay is not as bad as you think. eBay is, you know, used to be, if you look, eBay used to be like, AliExpress or Alibaba where essentially you every like fake item under the sun is sold on there but they've actually they've really tightened things up nowadays and you know maybe 80 to 90 percent of the things on eBay are authentic and a lot of them are reputable and it's all about you know doing your research on the seller as well so I like to purchase my items from Japanese consignment sellers um, I find them to be quite trustworthy because in Japan if you didn't know um, selling how to fit goods is actually a very very how do I put this essentially Japan is very strict on their policies regarding fake or counterfeit goods so um, they tend to abide by these rules and there are some like um, I've seen it on some consignment stores before, but but there's like there are groups against counterfeiting in Japan, so that's something you can look out for. But I'll put my favorite sorry sort of eBay sellers in the info bar. But I find that I prefer to buy from Japanese consignment sellers because value for money that is where I get the best price for my item, and they are really well known for selling you know secondhand Louis Vuitton and Chanel. Because if you've ever been to Japan you would know there's almost a consignment seller on every corner primarily Louis Vuitton, Chanel and Hermes like the Japanese love their designer goods so um, that is why I like to buy from Japanese consignment sellers I'll go into looking at seller details later but I have also purchased from private sellers on eBay before but you know there's a range of places where you can buy authentic items and a lot of people are in Facebook groups nowadays that sell you know, authentic Louis Vuitton, Chanel, things like that. So there's a range of places to go. I'll list a whole set for you guys to check out. 
So you found an item that you that looks okay, but you're not 100% sure. Um, hopefully by this point you will have done your research and you would have looked for the red flag. So red flags is basically anything that's obvious to you, that's kind of making you a little bit nervous, a little bit uneasy. Um, something's telling you that this isn't real. So things to look out for include, you know, obviously tags that um, don't really come with the item. So Louis Vuitton does not have an authentication tag. Um, it only comes with like a textile card and that's barely an authentication. Like don't even worry about that. Some may come with a receipt. So that's, you know, that's good to have and they all vary in how they're printed depending on where they're purchased. So um, if it's different, I wouldn't count on that necessarily. But things I'd be looking for is, as I mentioned, if you've done your research, you want to be looking for stitch count, making sure that the stitching is perfect having a look at you know the pattern if you're buying a Louis Vuitton item there's authentication videos where you can look up you know the distance between you know each pattern how many squares per length in the fabric one thing that I want to stress if you see an item for a really cheap price and you think this is too good to be true it probably is okay so I just want to put that out there trust your gut on this if it's too cheap to, to sound legitimate then it probably is too good to be true as well now bear in mind there are some listings like eBay listings that start at one dollar or one cent and that that doesn't mean it's fake because those prices will go up but they just tend to start the items you know for that price to get more views so keep that in mind as well but for a buy it now price and it's stuck it's like 100 bucks for something that should be $500 even in the pre-love condition now I want you to be thinking what what's going on here why is this item so cheap it might be it's authentic and it's got a massive flaw or it's just really not real at all and with Chanel pieces look at the authenticity card um, there's authentication serial numbers you can look up basically tells you what the actual numbers should look like depending on the year because they change up the font some have sans serif some don't um, you know what the stickers should look like the authenticity card should be just like a credit card if it's got hologram um, around it then that's a fake essentially and Louis Vuitton also have date codes so you can look up date codes on you know websites just google it so researching and then applying it it all kind of ties in together so that's you know the first thing you want to do look out for any red flags then when you kind of get a feel that you know I think this item is legitimate I would strongly suggest that if it is your first time you get a third-party authenticator it's not expensive usually you just have to pay maybe ten dollars or so for an email authentication um, but if you get a third-party authenticator that is the best sort of service that you can get because you're paying someone to authenticate this item for you so they look at it in a lot of detail and they usually ask for detailed pictures and then they will either depending on what service you pay for they will either email you yes this item is you know correct based on these pictures or if you pay for a full you know certificate of authenticity they will go ahead and do that but I recommend that you know I would suggest you do that when you actually receive the item just because you can, they can still do a bait and switch but if you if you don't really want to pay there are also services on the purse forum where there's very very knowledgeable um, members there that can authenticate pieces for you now some of those members actually do work for authentication services but some of them don't so um, this is why you know if you can pay for a service it's much better but if you can't you could always go to the purse forum and you know go to the Chanel or Louis Vuitton sub forum and post your pictures there just make sure you follow their rules and um, they also have other they also have the Balenciaga YSL things like that but I've never I have tried to use YSL before but um, they don't have you know as many authenticators there so I, I wouldn't trust them authenticating those brands I would seek out you know more well-known third-party authenticators before or after you've done that you also want to kind of look at the red flags on the seller so you know looking at the seller's credibility so if it's on eBay you want to have a look at 
you know, how long they've been a member for, how many items they've sold or bought, um, you know, what their feedback is or their, their rating. So some of them would be like 99%, 97, 96. I think that if it's in the 90s, that sell is quite legitimate because you also want to look at the um, the amount. So, for example, some Japanese consignment sellers do have, you know, 96% or 97%. But they've been selling on eBay for like five years. They've got 96%, but they've had like thousands and thousands of reviews. So um, the power behind 97% is a lot more compared to, you know, 97%. This person's only sold one item and that one person thinks they're amazing. That one person thinks, you know, their service is worth 97%. That just doesn't mean as much as, you know, thousands of people thinking this seller's um, rating is 97% and also I like to look at the actual individual feedback I like to check the negative feedback and then you know I actually click on the item itself and have a look at it um, sometimes the buyers on eBay just just put rubbish absolute rubbish on some of the sellers feedback and really um, they don't know what they're talking about and I get really angry like at people like that because obviously these people are trying to make a living off of you know reselling or this is their business and they're basically slandering that's slandering if they have no grounds to make those those accusations so I always I always like do my own research I don't just believe what everybody else say so if you can have a look at what those um, buyers are saying about the item that they are claiming to be fake look at it it does it look fake to you um, and do some research on that obviously like I said all of this takes time all of this isn't just you know let's just click on this and purchase it I do do a lot of research and that is just me that's just always how I've rolled I always like to be sure and and just making sure that I am safe in, in what I'm doing um, another tip when looking at the item or dealing with the seller is that